So first of all, I just want to say thank you to uh, Lewis and Brian for um, dealing with uh, <laughs> a lot of stuff uh, in a short period of time. Um, what you have in front of you on the uh, printed out spreadsheet that's not in the folder is our, a prioritization of capital projects. This is the full list of capital projects and we've kind of list them out of what's high and medium um, based on what we have funding for. The lows are already off the list, essentially. We have a black line that's deferred, <laughs> deferred to next year. Um, the total list was a little over $9 million, which is um, not sustainable uh, this year. Um, but I did rank the high and medium ones by price. And what I would like to accomplish in the next little bit is walking through the high and medium projects, um, answering questions about what they what the scope is and really whittling this down to which ones are the most critical, most important um, for us to take on in the coming year. Um, and the prices are on here. Most of the prices are from Merrick, um, who's given us uh, pricing for next year and it's significantly higher. I'll, I'll call out that the, the combo project that was put out last year that did not receive any bids, the total value of that was about one and a half, 1.3 to one and a half million. Um, Right now, if we put those together, it's more like three million, which could be a reason that it didn't get any bids. Um, it was just under underpriced um, for the scope that was necessary. Um, so we've got more accurate numbers right now. Some of them are kind of scary, um, but I want to walk through the projects with you guys to really get a, a what are we willing to give up on this list and defer to 2024, and what needs to happen in 2023. Um, there's not much room for nice to haves. The target is about, so typically we run between three and 4 million a year in new capital projects. We've deferred so many this year that we're going to carry one and a half million forward. So kind of that five and a half million is our sweet spot. Um, but that's, um, it, it can go, it, we have a little bit of wiggle room. Um, and some of these projects we may get into it and be like, oh, this project, you know, may not be able to take place because of some constraint that we aren't aware of. And okay, do we table that and move to the next one um, while we have equipment here or something like that? Um, so this is kind of getting that priority list um, set up so that we know what to expect for next year and, uh, and that we're not deferring tons of projects for the, the 2024. We haven't, I don't think we've got to the evaluation. If we choose this list, how that we pay, I think that's going to be the next step. It's going to be the next Okay. <laughs> and we have a column that's our kind of where the money comes from um, that'll help with that um, kind of what Ed's talking about. But the once we set the priorities, this goes back into the budget. The next board meeting, we talk about personnel and between this and personnel, that eats up nine or 85 to 90% of the budget um, uh, of the total town budget. And then everything else, we just, it, it starts to sort out from there. So Rob, this, this number is significantly north of what we discussed earlier today. Is it? The formula wasn't pulling from the whole list. Oh, so. Well, I noticed the, the yeah. first line item is about a million dollars higher, but. When we were talking about it earlier, it was one and a half. And yeah. it was like, that's probably, a, that's good. That project's bigger. And we'll, so that's why that one's in red and, and notes that it's a placeholder. That's a, a bit of a shot in the dark as far as how much that one's going to end so, up being. What else increased? Or you're saying your your formula, the Watton correct, is done pulling? Uh, the, the formula, the sum, <clears throat> the 9 million, uh, 9.4 million total, that's where the formula was not pulling the whole list. It only caught part of the list. The only one that changed was the 2.5 million, the very first one. Right. Um, and um, we had one of the other smaller ones change. Um, 
<clears throat> and the nine and a half million is just the high and medium? Nope, that's the entire okay. list. So the for the if we were to do all the projects marked high in terms of priority, that's uh, almost eight million. If we we're to do all the, just the medium projects, that is um, you know one point one million. Um, and then we can mix things. Um, truly, if you st started with Buyers Avenue and went down through all the medium projects, we would end up right around five and a half million, five point seven, I think. Um, but that cuts out the first two projects, which are also from the healthiest funds. So, you know, even though it might fit into our target range, it may not come out of funds that are where it's the best place to pull them up. It's so unfortunate sense. that all the all the most expensive projects are in the high bucket. Yep. <laughs> yeah, but these are all ones that were deferred from prior years and uh, or called out in our uh, CIPs and stuff like that. So they are all... All of these are important. All of them are high. We just can't afford all of them. and Ed, if you want to talk about these two first two ones because that's I mean, this is basically addressing the sewer line issues in Old Town, where the pipes are clay, they're undersized. Um, we get a lot of uh, basically backups and stuff like that. And it's an ongoing issue that we've known about. But to replace a lot of infrastructure is um, both expensive and also tears up chunks of Old Town um, while you're doing the project. So inconvenient. If you, if you drop that On the project? Uh, on our existing, our existing, yeah. So why is the town able to do an open cut and parks development out of the board? The boards are much more expensive than the just asking us. Yeah, I guess I don't think that's not so strange, but that's a... Might have been a CDOT thing. It wasn't our... No, I understand it's not our we, fault. We didn't require it. No. For, the CDOT would not allow an open cut. Yeah. But they would allow an open cut. Do you, do you have a diagram of this? So we can kind of see. I'm just wondering, is, is the second line item, is that upstream or downstream from the first line item? It's upstream. Okay. Yeah, because a lot of these seem to be uh, on the first page anyway, the water and the sewer system. Is there one thing that helps alleviate, you know, like, for example, 97 of our complaints came off of the intersection for paved roads at Safeway and Murdoch's, right? That's mm -hmm. our number one complaint, the bad road. We fixed that and a lot of the complaints went away. Is there like the bore okay. underneath the highway? Does that take away a lot of the pressure on the sewer and water system or is that? I would I would put that as a higher priority than the than the old town hours replacement of the play pipes. Right. Because it takes no because the I and I is an issue on the play pipes, right? We're trying to get about the floor. If we upgrade the old town play pipes from eight inch play pipes to thirty four eight inch where that's the problems and things, we're gonna be feeding the system that already has some Right. So we replace the main trough here between the tennis court and uh, that dot must have dot suit. 
So when we do that, Copley can tie into that. Yeah. system. A new one will, will follow. We do eventually do a whole service line. Service line. Yeah. Uh, the system will be able to handle that. Right. So that, again, even though it's the most expensive one, which is always the case, if that solves some of our major issues, and it allows us to fix other issues that are already be set up for it, then that would be one that I would think would be at the top of the list. Yeah, I agree. Which takes a ton of work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. and, we, and this, yeah. this prize, <laughs> we, had, an we had 1.5 on there. We want development in that zone. Yeah. We've got to have it done. Yeah. We had 1.5 in there, and, but I, based on some of the numbers for other projects, 1.5 just didn't seem no. sufficient. <clears throat> Nothing's getting cheaper. So that was a, a lag at the mid Yeah. We yeah. did have better numbers mm -hmm. with, uh, sometime in October. We, we are going to apply for grants, right? To try and find revenue outside of our. I mean, you guys are actively. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. grants are uncertain, so you don't want to budget off of them unless you have the piece no. of paper. No. Um, but. Sticker price for yeah. one of those grants out there. Yeah. No, and some of these are going to be, I mean, most of the grants right now that will support projects like this is going to be matching grants and stuff. So saying, hey, we're committing this, mm -hmm. we may come back and say, oh, we're going to commit less so that we can get matching funds and stuff like that. Um, and then that goes to the what's next on the list. Where, you know, where else, if we have savings in one project, can we apply it to another? Because we right. will have some cost overruns in certain projects. So and most of those grants also require that you have that. Yeah, done. Right. Yeah. But with the infrastructure build, there's a lot of money for infrastructure. Yeah. And just I'll make that. Yeah, the big challenge is going to be timing the grants with the actual construction and when the when when things get approved, um, and we want to get things nailed down now so that we can say okay this is how we're going to move forward rather than catching up um in december and being like oh mm -hmm. now we're we're suddenly trying to scramble to get uh, bids <clears throat> so number one project is the um sewer line replacement and tie-in for the old town yeah okay 2.5 what do we want as a number two i'd probably put buyers avenue um water main is that the one I keep reading? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two residents without water. Mm -hmm. No, that's it. <laughs> I don't think one is really a residence. I don't think they're more than one. I couldn't hear you speak. I think one's one. just a business. I don't think they live in one. One's a residence, one's not a thing. Not a one yeah. One, one's a house. One, I don't think anyone lives in the other one. That makes a difference. I don't know the actual come up on the weekend. I think it's some either two or three people who have a freeze issue. I yeah. Know, two that can address the board. Mm -hmm. We know that there are others. We've done cost analysis of water usage over the winter and we've compared that with Eisenhower, but yeah. it's not a freezing issue. Yeah. And some of these residents have been putting off up to a thousand gallons a day just to keep the water lines running. Yeah. And it's freezing on the line itself, not on the curb stops, right? It's uh, hard to tell. Our main is not freezing. Okay. But it's only like but five foot. The main and the service line, you know, the main is already shallow. Yeah. It, it should be nine feet. I think it's close to the same. The club that comes off the main that goes to the stall, we don't know if that section is freezing. We don't know if it's the curb stop freezing, or we don't know if it's the service line from the curb stop to the residence is freezing. Okay. The buyer's project. Um, Originally, only contemplated lowering the line, um, but that didn't solve the freezing issues for the service lines, and it would also require a tremendous cost on all of them. Because if they did replace the service line, they would be cutting the street to take the money. This new project, it does have a higher price tag. But what it does is it, it drops the service line, it drops those court lines, it extends the uh, curb stops out to the to their property at the property down. So now the homeowners, if they're going to replace their service line, they're not paying five or six times as much as they 
uh, the normal replacement test that we've got for the uh, tension on the back. It's advantageous to the homeowners. It resolves all the freezing issues. They're still, we still have an incentive program that they want to replace their service. Yeah. <clears throat> Is that that loan? Yeah, we offer a loan or we offer a 25% uh, kind of forgiveness on the cost of it. I don't know how we would incorporate that forgiveness into our water budget, but that's. Is there 13 houses, 14 houses on this? 23, 23. 23. How many of them are, are freezing? That's close. We run our water all winter long. We have a belief that we run all winter. Are you on board? Is there any way, way to tell freezing. where it's freezing in the line? It's because the, the, you can weigh the frost level sinks down to the level that the lines are versus being deep enough. Right, I understand that. Okay. But it, understanding where, where is it freezing is not the you're saying is not the main, not the main. The service line from the main to the curb stop. Or from the curb stop to the house, where, where is it freezing in there? Do we know? We don't know. It could be anywhere on there. It could be the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fortunately, the whole main has one, but you figure there's people running water off and on all day where individual homeowners might be gone for the day. And that's all it takes. Our code calls for a depth of nine feet. And uh, we think it's changed for something. Yeah. If, Seven. How, how long have you lived there? Since 1978. Have you always had to bleed? We have always bled, and we've had it freeze before. Um, and we've lowered our service line <clears throat> and insulated over the top of it. Still freeze. But um, Dennis doesn't want to risk having it freeze, so he keeps it running. So if we do this, it's going to make it go down to nine feet. He thinks it's at like seven or eight with insulation over it. If you've dropped your service line to here and our main is here, there's kind of a grease snake that comes off. If we drop this to there, you still got the valve stop, which is sitting at seven feet. So yeah. you run this line to here up high, and then it comes back down, and that high point becomes a freeze point. Right. Yeah. We're going to think our line. This drops all. Right. And those four from those service lines to the coach. Was the main put in after or before the code was set? Oh, yeah. Oh, Way before so the code. Yeah. yeah. My house was built in 19, well, I saw paper in the walls from 1940. It didn't freeze as much when I left the snow on it. But now right. that we plowed off all the time, it freezes. It used to be colder, right? Oh, yeah. Way colder. <laughs> Any event, with Seriously. as far as the project goes, we're also working with finance about a about a, a fix for those residents because this is going to delay till next year. We want to make sure we get through this winter. Mm -hmm. The amount of water bleeding off uh, is inconsequential, really, mm -hmm. uh, as far as the cost basis goes. Uh, and we're exploring bleeder valves that can be set to a certain amount. We've explored a lot of different options in it. So. The goal here is to get the residents through this winter so we can get this project built up soon. Yeah. So why, why not stop the plowing or leave some snow on there to keep it insulated? That's what we do. That would be the cheapest solution to this. Well, not time. that the whole road. Well, I mean, we I need don't to know. replace I'm, that water. I've looked line. at the whole thing, but you know, <laughs> I'm not going to wait. You're saying it here. We'll stop, we'll stop, in stop on plowing that. your road and see how you get through the winter. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's cheaper not to fly yeah. your way. Right. It's cheaper not to fly and then you don't have to replace all the lines. No, we need to replace the lines. But yeah, no, I mean, we leave a big pile of snow it's a, it's the over our water lines. Like the electric, when my time, electric heaters I run all the time, that's water. Mm -hmm. You know, all my crawl spaces have, I probably run eight, I probably run eight electric heaters on my property on Byers Avenue. Wow. <laughs> In the winter. You don't mind warm water all the time. You just wrap the line with an electric cord and let that zap off for a while. Can we agree to buyers have any water main is the number two project? Yep. Yes. 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 So, so we're almost at our 
We are at uh, four point two, and that leaves us one point three. <laughs> this feels like a, a middle school math class somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see what else is on there. So we ask problem. Furry creatures. No, it's not a big deal. Yeah, I think we. Is that a is, is furry creatures really just a blow off issue, or is it because we don't have the lines looping yet? Yeah. So we need to loop them at some point. Yeah. yeah. At some point, and Philip is correct. I, I, live, I live up there. No, I'm, very, I'm fine. You're going to spend a million bucks on doing that yet. Yeah. So, how do you get rid of the, you just blow out the lines every now and then? Twice right. a year, they go out and they blow out the hydrants. So, these, these lines dead end, and they dead end their sedimentation, their sedimentation <laughs> water. Uh, if you want. The, looping the lines increases water pressure, the ISO goes into fire protection, mm -hmm. and, it, and it, it's a more sanitized. Water. So dead ends at a hydrant. Yeah. yeah. And you can just bleed the hydrant. And and we do they don't, not all hydrants. They have, they're not hydrants. They're like valves. Mm -hmm. They are the valves. Not like yeah. To get the gray gunk out. <clears throat> have you seen but, that video where the guy opens the dam and all the mud and stuff goes out yeah. first and then it comes out clean water? It's the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. You can watch them do it at the end of my street. You don't want right it. Right at Mountain Willow, that, that hydrant right right on Old Victory and Mountain Willow, they'll bleed that line. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So if you would like to uh, defer the uh, <laughs> furry critters looping, <laughs> okay. So we still have 1.3 and we've deferred a couple projects potentially. Oh, we don't spend it, do we? Huh? So we don't have to spend it. No, but we, you know, that makes the project list a lot easier for next year. Mm -hmm. We just stay focused on two. Right. I would recommend that we make the uh, the next item, the PRV, the pressure reducing valve replacements. It is a lower price, but it also helps us regulate our pressure between, between water cycles. I'm fine with that. Now we're down to a million. Yep. We're down to 970. Somewhere. So that 330, does that include the 200K? That's carried it does. Out? So that'll carry into that. So what about the soda ash? So is the total 530 or is it? The total is 330. Okay. But we're going to carry two, the um, 200 into that. Yeah. Okay. Virtually okay. 100. Well, 130 of new money, it's still going to cost 330. Yeah. So it's basically the first 3.5 million. Yeah. 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 What the second item, fourth, fifth? No, we didn't do fifth. Second item. And the quail with words is a lot like the uh, Cunningham. Mm -hmm. It's looping the lines and pressure back. Where's yeah. our worst section of R&I? Isn't the state coming down on us? Oh, no. Yeah. The INI? Old town. What's that? <clears throat> the INI. Oh, I know. This, this. All of old town. Old, old town. Just yeah. all Just because all, all the clay pipes are yeah. failing. Which makes sense. I mean, that's yeah. the oldest. And we know we don't know one section is worse than another. There's no other. Do you remember when we they did that yeah, smoke? smoke? The yeah. smoke? Oh. Yeah. They, they, we do now. I do, yeah. Was there a section we should do of that? The, what is the smoke test? Norgren. I, I, like, I remember seeing a smoke, smoke on Norgren. You, you smoke, or you pump smoke into the sewer lines, and it will tell you where people have improper connections. Uh, for example, if they have their cell pump feeding into that, it's coming from somebody's house. Okay. Uh, typically, you see this when people have their roof running through gutters, coming down and dropping into their, their clean up, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And you'll see smoke in the, in the dead lines. That's in the late We walked around. They did it. We walked around and saw smoke coming out of the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was crazy. And people's crawl spaces. And, <laughs> I was uh, looking at sharks and seeing like all the smoke. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't as dramatic as what I was thinking it was going to be, but yeah. I was hoping to see people running out of their houses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there were people that were like, what's going on? And you're getting fine, and we're getting fine. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Just serve them yeah. somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. how do we feel about the quail project? Um, no, push it, push no. it. Okay. 
And then the soda ash hopper as you're moving down the list. It's only another 45k, right? So we need to do that one. That's what we want to call the issue. Okay. okay. Put that on then. That's really good. Is that right? That's because there's carryover of 70, so it's right. only 45 more. No, well. Four point the, the grand total is 5.5. So that that includes the carryover being actually carried over. Got it. What we found out this year was mm. oh, this was carried over and it wasn't. So I'm just kind of calling out where the money's sitting right okay. now. Um, because that's something like a the time again where we had money allocated for this year, we're gonna need to move that um and make sure it gets tied to another project if we're deferring that one. Got um, it. so that we can actually get to the carryover. Got it. Okay. This next one I liked, but it can probably push. Which one? The concrete work, curb gutter, sidewalk. That is actually more of a uh, set of capital uh, expenditure. If you typically fall into maintenance, you know, our snow plows break up curbs, run plants, and so forth. Uh, and we don't have an active program of replacing the project. We know that there's some sidewalks that need to be installed. Uh, and we had a hundred thousand dollars in this year's budget for concrete work. Uh, so we're just going to carry that. No, yeah, jumping ahead a little bit. Yep. But I knew it was in here. The um, bathrooms that we're supposed to be doing over the mm -hmm. open space, cousins open space. Don't we lose that grant if we don't get that? Mm -hmm. We have until December twenty twenty four. Twenty twenty four. Yeah, it got extended, but we do have a time frame. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Originally, it was going to expire this fall or in December. And that's not so urgent. And, well, and that's still nice. It'd I mean, still be nice to have. And that that utilities, the restroom are together, and that's. Uh, yeah, four hundred ten thousand. Yeah, don't we have the building coming anyways already? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. we'll have the building there. We said there. We should probably connect it so that well, that, it's that, not just a vacant. There's certain there. people that are going to use it regardless if it's connected or not. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. We're, and we're likely to have the building, like what could arrive this year. Um, so the restroom, like the carryover, wouldn't be there because we'd have already bought it in this year's budget. Um, but we still have to run the utilities and connect things. Um, so parts of the, the, it's a it's a lump, but these are teased out into individual uh, line items because that's and how they were budgeted. We do have a, an action item in the next agenda that specifically about the Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think we saw that. <clears throat> so we're going to do the concrete work because it's already budgeted. That one I'm hearing. I would I would prefer to see the concrete work because we just we need to maintain it's like our streets, we need to maintain all that concrete work. Right. Well, the next one are, is, are we talk are we talking about aesthetics or are we talking about functionality? Yeah. Because if, if we're just talking about aesthetics, then I wouldn't I would be less inclined to say let's go for this. If if somebody's complaining that oh the snow plow hit the curb in front of my house and it's got a chunk missing out of it it's also an accessibility if the sidewalks aren't functioning well and you have that's why i'm saying people, functionality functionality aesthetics mm -hmm. so no, if it's people it's are cool. saying my my curbs dinged up then no i wouldn't but if it's actual functionality yes we do have some drains that some drain pans that would be repaired and that's that's a functionality we have some drain pans that kind of intersect manholes and that's the uh, we have a section of sidewalk missing in front of uh, Fraser River Beer Company, mm -hmm. which sidewalks get some money. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. like literally everywhere. All right. Uh, the Engelman stand, I'm going to take over for you on this one. Yep. The Engelman stand is a road to second rendezvous. Uh, the Hammerhead is basically a turnaround for a couple of schools. You know, as they're plowing up there, it comes to a dead end road, there's no call to sack out there. So we back into this hammer that we're seeing all over the ground here. They back into that so they can turn around and mix it out. Engelman stand, that hammer head is on the downhill side. 
uh, downhill side of the mountain, and the and it's starting to deteriorate. So, so almost to the point where I'm afraid to back up the track back up on the back. Uh, we would be looking to do the engineering work next year uh, to locate easements, locate a location for this, um, and also to do the planning for the uh, reconstruction probably in 2024 or 2025. I thought Rendezvous, Rendezvous had something like Grand Park's as control where they got additional taxes and tax fees to maintain their roads when they when people bought their properties, they pay an additional tax. Is that not only that good of a developer? Not only good right mm -hmm. the And they're not responsible for any of the road stuff? I don't think this so. Is is that, that's correct, isn't yeah. it? And that once the, once we accept mm -hmm. the road, there are responsibilities. Where is that road? You won't even stand. I couldn't tell you the name now, but I've been by it. But like Philip said, if it's functionality over the status or safety, this is a safety issue. And again, we're not doing the construction, we're doing <clears> the, <throat> the engineering, the main balls and easement, the right ways. Yeah, the issue. Plus, there's a lot of private property. Huh. If they want the road plowed, they better plow them. <laughs> <laughs> exactly how we put it to them. If you want this section of road plowed, you'll work with it. If you don't, well, you're not going to bring your trucks up. You can plow it. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can do that. Because there are roads now. If it's unsafe, it's unsafe. They're not going to let you do the work. So I wouldn't negotiate with them. We need to do this work. Let's go. So, do we keep that um, that amount in there? I imagine the engineering will probably come in a lot less than that. Yeah, the fifty thousand or sixty thousand dollars range. Yeah, but the, it's, it's just a simple thing. The e the easement piece is the the tricky part of that. Like I said, did we ever um, make it simple? Did we ever figure out why the roads are failing over there? In rendezvous. Yeah. Like those are the newest roads in our community, and they're they're failing. They're failing. Why are the why? Did we I ask you about it? Um, months ago. Yeah. The only one I can figure out is construction track. Well, then they're twenty-year-old roads. Twenty-year-old. Still. That's kind of a lot. And lots of construction. I'm making. I'm making. We do asphalt because he did construction on the road. They cut into the road. Should we make them do the overlay on it? We haven't accepted contracts. Well, with the uh, Eisenhower, did Eisenhower? Uh, the no, far one Grand next Park to Drive that, no, no, that the failed one. right after they put it in. No, right? no, I'm talking about the one that's on the far side of the town here that's between them and the apartment. No, I don't know. Mill Avenue. Mill Avenue. Mill Avenue. Are we making him repave Mill Avenue because he so cut into it? Didn't build it according to construction plans. Didn't. But it's not our street, Mill Avenue. No, that no, is no, our no. street. Okay. He cut into that right. uh, he put a sewer line in. Gotcha. Construction plans call for full width road replacement. And we just got a trench. Gotcha. So are we sure that in Rendezvous they did the things proper and didn't just cut in a trench well, and it's a little of... late now? But... Well, it's not a little late. You just it is a little late. We can't, say... We've accepted the road. You yep. can't, once you've accepted it, you can't go back. You're reliable. But yeah, but haven't they way. done new road cuts on that lower section in the last couple of months? Aren't they hooking in new subdivisions and new pipes? Oh, you're talking about the cuts on them. Yeah. yeah. That's construction. Yeah. But that's part of the you know, it's so overlay that's coming up the next week or so. New yeah, it just seems, it just seems <laughs> odd that they didn't do it right. Maybe we should see if we can get money out of them. Where where are you now? Which I'm fine So let's let's say focused on right. funding now. Well, that Ingold stand hammer yeah. the hammer. That's not a that's just a turnaround issue. We accepted the road. Probably shouldn't have accepted it. Right. No, if we accept the business stand, the turnaround was functional, but over a period of time, it started to change. Okay. So it was there, it's still there. I was just talking about rendezvous roads in general, that they're right, but they that's, not, to that's not this. I know they're 20 years old, but they seem to be deteriorating at a rapid rate compared they're to not, the other roads. They're not as old as the rest of Frazier. Ptarmigan and Old Town. Right. Oh, okay. They're, so, they're hmm. older than Grand Park, but. Right, Tommy is much older than that. 
<clears throat> so, anyway, anyway. But, I mean, that, I would add it to the budget. Stand. We'll put it on there. We're down to seven fifty-five, and the goal would be to get the England stand price down. Okay. Um. Now we're moving down to some more reasonable projects. We did say yes to England. Yeah. Is that just one, or is it multiple ones? Just yeah. one. Just one. Where is it? England stand. That's the name of the. Oh. Okay. I don't see it on the map, but Google has D N G L E. I think it is D N. Oh, D N G. No wonder one come up. But that's just the engineering of it, right? That's not the actual work and replacement. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's the engineering. It says it's winter park. It's right there. It's on private land. I'm just saying it's just it's crazy. Yeah. But we have an easement on the on the downhill side. Yeah. And either we spend a lot of money and build up a huge foundation, keep it on the south side. What's that? Oh, we get an easement, cut into the part of the rock, the, the mountain there, and do the back up there. Make this kind of thing. We're changing the way that road is much better. Right. Different I know exactly where this is at. Exactly. There are massive houses back yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes, different strategies. So we have uh, a few other items here on the list. We have uh, um, public works um, or the utilities. Um, we replaced one of the trucks this year with the crane that we talked about a long time. Um, this one is replacing the other utilities truck for water sewer stuff at it's priced right now at 90. Um, and that includes the outfitting, and we do not anticipate this one to have a lot of other like big ticket outfitting add-ons. Yeah, you have it as a high priority, mm -hmm. so. Okay. Are we good keeping that? Should probably make it so. So with the truck, we, we're in the queue right now to order another truck. Um, we won't execute that order, but basically, We've kept our place in line um, and because they keep going up as far as utility trucks. The mixer tank, that sounds like not, sounds important and not too much money. It is. Okay. What is that again? It's the second to the last item well, on no, the first I mean, what page. Is yellow zone mixer tank. Yeah. We have, we have, storage tanks underground <coughs> up on the mountain side on the, on the uh, east side. Uh, we have the yellow zone, I think there's a green zone, maybe a red zone. The yellow zone tank, uh, I don't understand what stratification is per se, but the mixer just thing that keeps it, keeps the water moving in there. I think it uh, needs some way. Uh, is it drinking water? It's drinking water. It's drinking water, and it's kind of the the scale buildup that you get in your house. It's the, it's an agitator that keeps that from. Make sure our water is nice and hard when it comes to the pipes. It, it keeps okay. the hardness of the water, but it actually keeps it going through the pipes. <laughs> <laughs> Which folks on buyers will tell you is not you know, no water coming through the pipes is not a good. Thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> especially when the cross line is safe. Yeah. You've got ice, ice okay. cubes. Um, we have a leak detector uh, at the bottom of the first page. That was actually the highest priority thing that uh, Lucas requested in order to be able to take care of some stuff internally, rather than calling someone from the front range and have them drive up and hope that they show up in time to figure out where the leaks are. Um, the Twin Rivers was the, the example he used of that one. It sounds like a couple of phone calls to the front range and you'd hit that $10,000 mark pretty quick. Yeah. Um, the guys probably spent uh, 12 or 13 hours walking that round looking for that leak. Oh, gosh. So on the weekend, uh -huh. over time, uh, yeah. trying to determine where that leak was. The leak detector would have been kind of like that. Okay. Yeah, that sounds like a great investment. Yeah. So now we get down into uh, the second page. Um, this is where the numbers jump around a little bit because we're going from high and medium projects and stuff that's 
somewhat in this year, but maybe into next year um, with the restrooms and utilities. Um, we have about 635,000. <clears throat> Six hundred thirty-five thousand left there. They would spend. Mm -hmm. I know it's a big chunk, but I think we got to hook up the restrooms. Well, if you're gonna have them, you better have them hooked up because yeah. people are gonna use it. All right. They will figure out how to give me the lock. We can't they... have a vault toilet or anything. We explored that. You could put some pumping on it. It was really expensive. Right? It was really expensive. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if it was expensive. That was one of the, I mean, the whole project was geared on, you know, delivering water and sewer services to the bathroom. Uh, and again, it was, as you recall, the path was taken up between the two ponds. You know, so it's just, it's just yeah, something. Uh, I still do not have a, a complete engineering drawings for the for the new layout of pipes to the Safeway, uh, corner of Safeway. Uh, it is tied to that grant. There is a uh, 2022, 2024 deadline in December. Um, Conroy is going to do the excavating. Or they, they're going to do the foundation. That's the beginning of tonight. So the time um, timing mean, wise, it works out pretty close getting this foundation built, both the back and the place. Uh, but we expect to do the damp for water and sewer line work next year. Mm -hmm. As soon as he's ready to start, we should have the funding budget that can make it happen. Well, I'd like to lock in the price now because yeah. I see prices going up next year. Do you really? Just <laughs> tad. Do you, do you think so? I think I see what I'm seeing is real estate slowing down. You're going to have coffee. You're going to have a lot more people wow. looking for work. And better. more products out there. But I don't know. That's what everybody's saying. You can look at the real estate. Look at how long real estate's been on. Mm. Um, on, on, on. It's not selling as fast. That doesn't mean the prices are coming down. I didn't say that the prices weren't. I'm talking about That's what the, the house building. People are, are There's going to be a lot of people looking for jobs in the very near future because there's not a lot of new construction. Yeah. So, I mean, all of the big developers are like saying we're pulling back we're not that's true so that's true that's time that happened in grand county everybody left yeah hopefully we're not there but we do have two hundred twenty-five thousand left <laughs> and a few more items here going once going twice mm -hmm. is that after the first two yeah. items that's after the uh bathrooms restrooms and utilities so and this is where i would like to look at it as um these are, you know, I'll say aside from community housing, most of these are smaller dollar amounts. Um, and I would like to look at, you know, this list of which ones are most important to you to keep on the list. And then this is where this is the, I guess, nice to haves would be um, if we can uh, wrangle grant funds or extra money uh, and, or savings and other projects that we would start looking at some of these. So Rob, you said the community housing, there's incremental dollars coming in from the short-term rental. How much, how much is that of the 750? Um, right now, the 750 was what we has been done in the past for general funds. Uh, mm -hmm. What we're projecting right now, um, and, I, and we haven't really run it with the the great uh, graduated uh, rates, but we were expecting probably a two to 250. And that would be tied to the housing authority um, fund. Well, we can't, we obviously can't spend 750. That's gotta be cut. Well, shouldn't we leave some money for overrun? So, um, with the Merrick uh, estimates, is all they build contingencies into those. So, they have a, actually a pretty healthy contingency in there. So, I was like, okay, you're guessing pretty far in advance. So, okay. Um, Checking. Yeah. And what <clears throat> did you say we have like 230K? Uh, 225, but. <clears throat> At this point, five is not going to make a difference one way or the other. Mm -hmm. So the question on the community housing really comes down to: you know, Do we want to maintain the level of seven hundred fifty thousand dollars of support? Now, all that has come from the general fund before. We can offset that cost by certain rental fees uh, that uh, 
six beds out for the first. <laughs> How much we're anticipating? Like so that, that's, that's in the ballpark of about 125,000 next year. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that's, yeah. So how was that money being spent for 750? So this, well, this past year was Victoria year. Village for the payment of that. Okay. Um prior. But next year, what is it? Prior, prior to that, we set aside money for uh, housing projects, <clears throat> restriction program, which we never got any traction on. Yeah. Um, we didn't offer enough money for people to make it work. In the hopes project. that projects would come up and we'd have some funds to help pay for them. Well, if something comes up, why can't we borrow money for that if we need to? Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure I would budget 750. Maybe whatever we get from short term rentals, you could budget for that. But then beyond that, if there's a, a big project that pops up and we have an opportunity to acquire some land or whatever. The only thing we don't know is is the amount of commitment that we would have to put in for Victoria Village with, right. with a partnership. You know, we can leverage the land to some degree and, and we can try to tailor that agreement in that public private partnership uh, using the value of the land to uh, offset those costs and bring it to affordable wheat ground. But we don't know how much might be needed for infrastructure or uh, uh, we've got zoning issues. And so I think there's uh, we need to have some contingency there. So we can keep, but if we've got a commitment on the grant, we have start construction in what, two years? Or? Uh, 24 months of, or yeah, 24 months of receiving the funds. So this, you know, <clears throat> we'll be awarding a developer, uh, negotiating a contract, you know, hopefully <clears throat> executing a contract by the beginning of December, late November. Throughout this winter, this upcoming winter, we'll be going through that master planning process to figure out what the community, what the board, you know, what we want to, how we want to design that site for Victoria Village, and then look at a reasonable way of phasing in development for that, for that land. So once we establish that master plan, we'll have a better idea of what numbers can look like based on those types of buildings that we want to build in that first phase. Um, the way things have been going as what comments have been made tonight is, you know, costs have gone way up for materials and for labor. Um, and if you want to have a, a good project, um, you have to be ready to subsidize it. Winter Park hasn't had any projects where they didn't <laughs> end up subsidizing it heavily from their general fund, even outside of their real estate transfer tax um, and other resources available. So, how many developers do we have looking at it? I mean, over a dozen. I'm very okay. interested. We'll, we'll have a good turnout. We have a developer Q and A session next week. And uh, I already have several people who would like to do some feed for that. And um, we even have a good, I hate to say this, but we, we have a we have a good project. And yeah. when you compare it to some other projects that are going on for in Granby, for example, litigation is a big part of that that's taking place in that parcel. Victoria Village is pretty clean. Yeah. And it's very attractive for a developer. We should talk about the zoning on it. We're gonna up with a change in the major building. Higher density, higher building. Well, we've already got overlays for big building buildings. So, yeah, but we still have it at 45 feet. And we have other parts of town that are 55 feet. This is far enough at the end of town that 55 feet might work. Okay, can I suggest we maybe get that developer on board and look at what they're proposing? Uh, make sure that they're tailoring our zoning specifically for them. Yeah. No, right. I'm, I'm not just screaming with them, I'm just asking, can we oh, yeah. fix that zoning as we go along and make it better? Yep. So on that on that line item, let's say if we come up with one and we decide I, we I need to it. put in our I got, I got a scare check. We have all said that our housing is the highest issue. Right. Okay. And, so, and we have it in medium. And now we're not we're talking about not even funding that. No, I'm not talking about not funding it. But but that's some of Hold on a second. So my question is, I mean, so about, what we're going to need to do too is put money in towards the infrastructure for the Victoria Village site. Once you have an idea of what's going to go in there. And that's part of community housing is making that happen. 
that's the one place that, uh, that we can see. But you can put it in the capital fund for. So housing. would it be? Is it a different? Is there another fund you could pull that out of? Or is this it? No. So nothing is in the Fraser Housing Authority Fund right now. Uh, it's a standalone fund, and it's only funded by these STR um, fees, the bedroom uh, fees. The everything else has been under the town board budget for community housing under the general fund, which is funded by sales tax. So we put the two twenty five in there would have two hundred and twenty five thousand. If I can make a recommendation, mm -hmm. uh, we're we're first okay. through a budget work session. Uh, this budget's gonna be the next three months that we'll be working that. You know, we haven't determined the operational cost, we haven't done the revenue projections yet. We're just gonna get an idea of capital. You can leave it in there now and see how those numbers flesh out. But as we start assigning uh, certain projects to certain funds uh, to see how what's left in the general fund. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I kind of agree with, with Philip that this this has been a priority mm -hmm. uh, and identified, and we've right. we've put in one and a half million dollars into this already. Right. So the question is, do you want to continue to do that same level of support? And we can sort out the, the distribution of sort of fees versus uh, as we get closer to that. Uh, I mean, I think everyone's committed to that, but uh, the problem I have is we don't even know how much money we're going to need. So how do you budget? All of it. I know, a but how, what number whatever do you put we, in there? Whatever we can put in there, we should put in. Is the way I feel. Couldn't put enough. <clears throat> There's just not an. We could put all five and a half million in there, and it wouldn't. Right, I understand that, but just gotta we have other priorities too. But maybe we just leave it in there, and then, you know, whenever we get the numbers true to our, you know, a little bit closer to being realistic, then we can tweak it. And I think how did it get to be a medium? Priority? Right, that's what I was confused about. Yeah, who did that? Because it had another funding stream coming into it, the so it's the at what what amount? Okay. The STR. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're talking about? Yep. We can simply say that is a high priority. Sure. Yeah. Seven fifty. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, again, whatever the number we put in there, it's probably not going to be enough. Right. Uh, but it just get open the doors and get things started. Yeah. Sure. But who knows? Uh, we may have to bond for that, but that's that's the total we should have that. Uh, you know, that's kind of and that was going to bring be my other point was, so this you know. We can throw money into it and it might not give us a lot of bang for the buck right now. I mean, a lot of this is going to, you know, the affordable housing is not going to change for a couple of years as far as the volume. Um, but if we have a lot of projects here that are all high priority and we don't have enough money, does the, you know, does this start to change the conversation around the town taking on debt? Isn't there something on the ballot in November to help fund all the housing for the reason the housing authority? Will that help fill the gap there? No, it wasn't yeah, this fund. Look, that's the first I mean, one. I think mean, that's their own unit. I mean, if the yeah. county yeah. if it passes, then it, yeah. could we get our pro rata share of that of that money? No, that's no. The pro rata share. It, go, it goes to the Fraser Valley Housing Authority. Right. We're, we're part of it. We're, we're a part of it, but, but it's, they make it's there you go. Whatever their name is. They're going to make the decision. But then they make the decision. Where's housing best to go first? So we could apply for the money for a grant or whatever. No. No. They're going to pick where they're they going to think the housing should be built. Yeah. And that's where they're going to But build. we have a representative on that committee. Yes. Yeah. But they're going to build their own projects. Um, and we won't have say over that necessarily. Okay. We've heard that number, but that is a separate unit of government. Mm -hmm. It's own taxing authority and its own building. Right. So, yeah, the no levy is to support their operations, not ours. Didn't think, we kick in like 50 grand for that? We did. That's the kind of startup part. So, the goal of that partnership, too, is, you know, so that eventually the town can get away from having to do these large allocations to housing right. and create an actual system that can handle the affordable housing challenges that we have in the valley so that's kind of the main one of the big drivers behind all this this ballot initiative is to get a funding source for this board that's been created um, to take the stress off the towns and municipalities to drive forward these housing initiatives 
which again won't be effective for a few years. Though. Okay, quit talking about the Fraser River. <laughs> My blood is boiling. So we already had a Grand County Housing Authority. We already had a regional housing authority that did nothing. So gotcha. well, let's have hopes for this one. Day. Yeah, I hope so. I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> did, were they funded there? Did they we'll take over Victoria yeah. Village for us. Right. There yeah. it's not, it's that would be the goal. Just put on line. We'll talk in a minute. So I'm going to, I'm on this, I'm moving uh, the town, uh, the community housing above the drop expansion and that soaks up our funds. Um, We're done. We're yeah. Done. Um, Good thing because that's time. We got five minutes now. Yep. <laughs> um, and so what we are, what we are deferring uh, just to recap is basically from I'll say the drop expansion and then everything below the community housing on the second page is going to get deferred. So that's the um, uh, church, town hall, there were current projects that can, and the drop were all kind of current projects that are going to defer. And then on the first page, we are deferring the sewer line replacement of Old Town with uh, alley pipes, the uh, ptarmigan furry creatures. Mm -hmm the quail repairs and the concrete work. Um, and where we can, if we find savings, we will try to get other projects in, but this kind of gives us our, our ballpark. Um, and what you see below the black line um, is the stuff that was either low or wasn't really a capital project, but was tied to one of these projects. And so we're gonna push that stuff off to the next year. Yeah. So drop, you know, drop goes to medium. Hmm? Yeah, basically, the black line will move up to the top of medium. Basically. You know, the one piece that is part of infrastructure and public safety is the engineering and design work for creating interconnects for municipal water systems for emergency use. And that was critical with the fires over north of Boulder that happened last October. It, um, it was critical, mm -hmm. that the water connect that they had there. Is fifty thousand. I think that if you shuffle some money around, we should try to, we should include that as a priority because that's public safety. Interconnection. We talked about the earlier. That's the tie. Yeah. That, um, well, the only yeah. blue one. We don't have an that's option. The water. There's only one place that that's going to go, and we don't have an option. So. Terry said he would work with us on it. It has nothing to do with Terry. Terry has no say in where that water is. Okay. Cool. Well, we need one. So we'd like to see consensus about the interconnection and the engineering for that. So is that something we share with Winter Park and Tavernash? Yeah, these costs would be shared, not with Tavernash, should be shared with Grand County number one and Winter Park. Grand 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 so 50,000 is, is that the total number? Or is that just our share? Our share. And this, that's just engineering and planning and. and have they committed those their funds? I don't know if they even know their budget because it wouldn't make sense for us to com commit that money and they're not committing theirs. Well, they or well, would it? They've all voted to be 100 percent supportive of that, so we don't know the cost. We just do the cost in our budget. Okay. So, we can plan so, so that, that sounds, sounds like important. we kind of need to budget for it regardless because right, we have the other two decide to go forward. We have to go forward. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, four, four minute break. Lots of discussions about that. You probably still got a name plate for me somewhere. <laughs> So the interconnect, did we approve that or did that move to high or was that just the what? We're going to keep it on the interconnect. Keep it on the interconnect. It sounds important, really. Yeah, yeah that you would help.
Well, you got the still place. Uh, you're back in Europe live. No, you're not ready for this. So, so she didn't do it. Let's wait for So, follow for this. There's another thing. I hear rumors that that building is sold. Can you handle the shuttle? Okay. Wait, it's trying to minimize it. Okay. Okay, so you're recording now? I am. Perfect. I'd like to go ahead and call to order the Town of Fraser's regular board meeting to order on September 7th already, 2022 at 7.02 p.m. Can I please have a roll call? Katie Fisher. Louis Gregory. Eileen Waldo. Brian Sirkvenick. Ron Quinn. Katie Souls. Philip Vanderdam. Sorry. Um, I'd like to, um, so I've given in and would like to move the open forum up and on the agenda. I had asked Ed about doing this earlier. Um, so I'd like to actually move that in front of the Board of County Commissioners before we approve the agenda. Um, so if I could have a motion with that change, I would appreciate it. I'll make a motion to move the open forum up to you're saying after the consent uh, agenda. After the consent agenda. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Now, can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda, which includes the minutes from August 17th, 2022? Oh, my. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And now we are at open forum. Is there anybody online? There is nobody online. We only have one. Andy's. No. Okay. <laughs> If, if we have one later, there might be someone coming to talk to us about something. Um, I'm assuming that we will allow them since we just did the change. Did they check in with you, Antoinette, or did they? Um, do you know somebody? No. Like, okay. Okay. We'll deal with it when, when yeah. we get that. once we get. Yeah, that. it's a captain. Okay. Right. So, Board of County Commissioners update. Rich, are you here somewhere? I did confirm um, with the uh, Cindy McCoy, who was there. I'm not sure exact role, but we did confirm. So I, I don't know. Okay. Well, they're not here, so we'll move on. <laughs> uh, next is discussion and possible action. And first is Fraser River Bank Stabilization Project. Uh, good evening, trustees and mayor. Um, so this is a project that has been in discussions for a while. Um, and uh, what this is, is a letter of interest to apply for the Windy Gap Environmental Fund to stabilize the Fraser River Bank next to Safeway. And the area that we are talking about is right here. <clears throat> right on that meander. Right here. So, yeah. and uh, and I'll just kind of tee this up for Andy. He's gonna be, he's got a great song dance ready for it. He's excited. And, uh, and this, so this is a great project. Uh, so there are funds available through this this Windy Gap uh, Environmental Fund. Um, they were awarded, as Andy will kind of talk to you about, uh, through a lawsuit, uh, several million dollars available for funding to uh, promote the health of the Fraser River, to prevent sedimentation, uh, promote river uh, habitat. And this project here, we met with uh, with Andy and, and some other members of this uh, of this group. Um, and some other stakeholders in the area just to look at this river curvature here and how much the pressure from the Fraser River has been deteriorating this bank from that. You can kind of see where it's hitting this bank and then curving it even upwards to continue on and how much that has been eroding this river bank. So what this letter of interest is, is to say yes to the town of Fraser's interested, interested in applying for a grant funds um, to basically move the Fraser River a little bit uh, to the east 
in order to make this uh, this curvature a little more straight. Hmm. Uh, still maintaining some kind of curve to it, uh, but not the curve that you're seeing here that is eroding this Fraser River Bank, which is right on the, sh the shorelines here. Obviously, our biggest sales tech <clears throat> producer and essential business here in Fraser, my grocery store. Um, some really good opportunities there, along with the this this project is also recognized in the uh, Cousins Ranch Open Space Master Plan, and um, it just has a lot of good good parts to it. So, if we are able to get the funding for this, do all the due diligence, research, work with Colorado Parks and Wildlife, um, and various other interested um, stakeholders who are necessary to do this type of work. Um, we would move this river and it can also create a little bit better access for um, the for the public for the Fraser River access to actually be able to have a better uh, amenity next to the Fraser River for educational opportunities and, and even uh, access that part of the river. Um, this scope of work is looking like it would also include a stair step approach using large rocks, which helps to filter out sedimentation in the Fraser River and also slow down the current flow of the Fraser River. Um, and now that I have so poorly um, covered this project, Andy's gonna come up and do it right. And uh, one thing I do want to add to this letter is uh, we are just, we do need to put a number on the letter of interest for the funding um, that we'll be seeking through grant funds and potentially through Fraser funds in the future. Uh, project cost, this is, estimated at $250,000. Um, there are significant funds available through the Windy Gap Fund. And uh, I'll go ahead and hand it off to Andy. Thanks, pleasure to see you guys. Andy miller Frazier. So, um, so I continue my role as president of the Upper Colorado River Watershed Group. And through that watershed group and uh, Save the Colorado, which we're associated with a, an environmental group out of Boulder, a settlement was reached with Northern concerning the um, Chimney Hollow Dam over by Fort Collins. And the settlement was $15 million to come to Grand County Water Projects. Six member board was established to uh, disperse those funds over the next 10 years. There's already $5 million in the bank over at uh, Grand Mountain, uh, not Grand Mountain, I'm sorry, Grand Foundation, not a bank, but at the Grand Foundation. They are an integral part of this. And basically the parameters are any water improvement project that helps the quality of water at Windy Gap Reservoir and in Grand County. And it's a six member board, three members from my watershed group, three members from Northern. So it's a collaborative group. We've met now um, six times, I believe. And so we're just finally opening this first letter of interest round. And this is the first time that we'll consider dispersing funds. That we'll look at the letters of interest and then we'll go back to the agencies and tell them if we're interested in the project also, and then what we need to see to, to flesh the, the proposal out. Um, this project was actually kind of, lo was looked at and actually discussed with, with uh, CPAW Parks and Wildlife and with the Army Corps as part of Marianne's Loop. Um, it's, it's an integral part of the trail project in that we, uh, the, we, we bring a snowcat up that side trail behind Safeway already in the wintertime. And then it has to come out on the driveway there and go over to the gate um, and then around behind the uh, changes store basically and then continue on so it puts all the skiers and the snowcat out on the road and so this trail would actually become a winter route also and it, at the top of that berm would be a trail that would keep pedestrians and that snowcat out of the parking lot and it would also help discourage the piling of snow which we see there pretty substantially in the winter time from the Safeway parking lot and of course that Snow is not a good thing to be piling up by the river as far as water quality goes. So um, I think it's a good project. Jeff Elliott's done some preliminary designs on it. Like I say, some preliminary permit work. Um, the cost number, I'm sorry that didn't make it in. I told Michael not to worry about a cost figure and we got to looking at the LOI guide, guidelines and it asked for a cost estimate, but it's just a, a number to at least give us an idea what we think it might cost. But of course that, that would come farther down the line. So I think it's a real important project for Fraser and that, that berm, it was interesting um, last night on on um, PBS NewsHour, they talked about this storm event that they're that they're predicting happened in 18, last one was 1860, where California got 20 days of rain, 100 inches of rain. And they're talking about that being another, another possibility, even more so with global climate change. So we're talking about drought, but we're also talking about flood events. And I've long had a concern that the Fraser River is prone to that 
that type of uh, that, that type of event because we depend so completely on all the water infrastructure that diverts water out of that river as far as the Denver water board system and the ponds upstream from us and everything is is we count on all that to control that flow but we can't count on on a on a, on a massive event not coming down here so I think this improvement to that oxbow there would help protect Safeway and we all know what would happen if Safeway went went underwater for a period of time and we lost that sales tax revenue. So I think we need to really look hard at that. So I think it's a good project. Um, I think that that we we won't, you know, we'll, we'll have to see how the committee feels about it. But so far we've we've had a really good collaborative effort with the with these three members from Northern and 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 our our folks. I think it's going to be a, a real good process over the next 10 years. So hopefully this will be the first of a few grants that will help the Fraser River through through Fraser. So Questions at all? Yeah, Andy. So you're John Ewart is involved with the project too. Yes, they, he does a fish survey there every year. And yeah, I was going to say survey. I, I, I helped them last Thursday with right. the survey. Okay. The sculpting survey. Pulled me aside and showed me showed me his concern around the Mar Marianne's Trail where it's proposed to go around that. You look on the map where those trees are. Close, right, in the willows. The road. Yep. Those are all really old, mature willow trees, and he said it, those are critical to stabilize the bank. Okay, and just wanted to make sure that that if you put a trail up through there, that you don't cut down all those trees and mess sure. up sure the mm -hmm. uh, integrity of the bank there. Yeah, it's just the roots of those trees that are important. Yeah, the trees themselves don't matter. Well, the, the <laughs> without down. the trees, the roots are not how long for this world. So. You can cut them down to almost nothing in the root space. Sure, but there, but I think there's room in there to make make that work, John. We, we, Just as long as John's yeah. involved and make sure that oh, he's, absolutely, he's okay with. You know, it's interesting, Lewis. The um, Marianne's Loop, we we actually won that that two hundred fifty thousand dollar grant over over Winter Park. Um, they had a really good project too, but they didn't work with CPA. And CPA came in when we were designing Marianne's Loop, and they re rerouted a large section of that trail to a, a route that they preferred to keep a keep more of the of the existing willow bottomland that we have, and we we did that, and we because we, we worked. Jeff Elliott and I have done a lot of a lot of actual physical projects together. As far as I've helped him with uh, through my construction company, so Jeff uh, and and the team that I work with really work closely with with these permitting agencies. And of course, I as a contractor, I'll have nothing to do with any of these projects because I'm on the decision making board. But I have enough experience in the back end of it to. Mm -hmm understand that and I have tremendous respect for John he's he does such a, a great job and 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 we've got a real problem with um with the sculpin crash in that river and and this this we've got to do everything we can to get these fine sediments under control so yeah. those cobbles can loosen up and we can he get was that. very adamant about this in particular but um yeah that's, we actually had a pretty good harvest there was a lot of sculpin were there this time yeah there were oh, great. I don't know they I haven't seen the numbers yet but they Probably were because we've had so much rain and the river was up yeah, Despite well, I think some of the sedimentation that was coming down from wherever rendezvous or further mm -hmm. up, you know, maybe I don't know. There's, I think there's less of it than there was maybe last year. Last year was a down year. Good. good yeah, well, that's really good news because last yeah. year it was a horrible number. So yeah, yeah. last year is fifty three stalls. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Andy, do you know if they're going to be using the river wrap or are they going to actually put in big boulders this time that will actually keep that? Well, so it's an interesting combination between boulders and an actual gravel, because part of the problem with boulders is that is what's happening now is the river mines out underneath them. So the, the, the preliminary designs show that much of that gravel bar that's on the inside of that loop goes over to the other side of the river. And so it does get armored more. That's an important part of it. But you have to do everything you can to get the river to be happy where it is and, and deposit more gravel where you're or you're hoping that it does otherwise it'll just continue to carve underneath that we've got a pretty good amount of riprap in there yeah. already but it's just carved out from underneath it so hmm. well, the last project I did with Jeff is we put giant boulders underneath the water level and then we put boulders on top of it so the water couldn't dig out the right yeah that's really helps so I didn't know if that was your plan or... yeah that's part part of it but it, but again it's a, a big part of it is trying the willows you were talking about lewis trying to get that to establish itself on that bank too so it's a, there's a book called let the river do the work and it's a it's an, a more holistic approach to try and use gravel and vegetation to do a lot of this work too but there's places like this where it's a crux where i'm sure stone will be a part of it so but there'll be designs um, before this is 
undertaken, obviously, with how to get what you had planned on doing. That. Yeah. So you're not taking out the, the curve, the majority of the curve? No, no, it's just moving cool. over into that gravel bar mainly. So, yeah. And then the idea is to get the gravel bar on the other side. So, but so you'll see the town will so, see designs before it ever happens, so obviously. Yeah. yeah. So, have you seen Philip's letter? Did you look at Philip's letter yet? It's in our packet. The one that the, that, that we're drafting. The LOI, yes. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it I addresses did. the yeah. parameters of your organization. Yes, it does. Okay, good. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Michael and I are working closely together on that. So, great. Okay. Cool. Okay. Thanks. Motion. Thanks, you guys. Thank Pleasure you. to see you. I'll make a motion to um, approve the mailing of this windy gap environmental fund letter from the mayor to uh, help with the stabilization of the bank of the Fraser River. Is this a resolution or is this a yeah. informational? Well, oh, did I say resolution? Can we, can we add Sorry. to add that? To add the cost now the letter. Yeah, yeah. add the mail the letter basically. Yes, yeah. add the yeah. estimated cost of two hundred fifty thousand. Okay. All right. Okay. There's a motion yeah. on the table. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, Andy. However you say it on main deed restricted units. So the one love property deed restricted. Oh, did you just skip no, over did I? Oh, the lion on. Yeah. 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 Lions Pond, where we're at. So we received a uh, um, bid from Tahoe Excavating to pour the foundation uh, for the bathroom. Uh, they have a window of opportunity in mid October uh, to do that work. Uh, that aligns pretty closely with when we expect the delivery of the, uh, the bathroom. Uh, we originally expected the delivery of bathroom sometime at the end of September. The last communication I had last week, they hadn't started the construction that yet. So oh. we need to have the foundation in place and we need to have it cured so that we can do just a single lift and set it down on the foundation and the bathroom does arrive. And their cost for that project was 90... 95787. One five seven eighty seven. Okay. This resolution would give me authority to execute the contract for Conway Excavating. And that's part of these budgeted funds that we looked at earlier that are good to, would be carryover from this year for the project. No, we have current budget this year. This year for this. Yeah. Okay. Discussion? Motion. So move. <laughs> There a second. Second, second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So now we're at cost of parcel done. So I added this to the agenda just to clear up some uh, uh, some confusion. Uh, there's some uh, kind of rolling around about how many deed restricted units still. If you read my staff report, I'll try to summarize exactly the, mm -hmm. the process from from day one. Um, I included excerpts from the Planning Commission board where it was explained that the project would be treated as two, uh, where one overlay for the density would be given to the uh, commercial building for having a percent ground floor commercial. And the Doc Susie would be for 20% of those 10 to be set aside for deep restrictions. And this was explained by Kathy in the Planning Commission meeting. Uh, Bob Denise actually um, asked to clarify that toward the end of that meeting, and she'll click to that to do that. Um, now, that was what was discussed back in, uh, I think, April when they first came to the Planning Commission. Uh, there was no other mention in uh, any of the Planning Commissions or even the Board of Trustees meeting that came for uh, the final approval. Uh, about the number of deed restrictions. But it started to become a, a, a question because we have a needs assessment uh, study that was commissioned uh, part of the Fraser River Valley Housing Authority, where there was two or whether there's four. Um, so basically, the, the developers of Fraser have been operating under the belief that there's only two deed restrictions. So I wanted to 
talk with the board about this and get your thoughts, clear that up, so at least we can have a good path going forward to figure that. Are we considering it? One project with two buildings is that the no, it's no. Or is it a project and a project? And I, and I did forget when I talked to you, so if I did forget that there was a, if there's all the commercial that counts as part of the view district, it would have been based in that area as well. So in that respect, there it's one project but two separate. But there is a building. And Kathy one explained building. in that planning commissioning, we're separating the properties by applying one overlay. Uh, to the front building. Requirement for the front building, which gives them the density to put those 10 units in, which you normally be restricted to less than 10. But since it's 100% commercial, they're allowed to put, you know, I think up to 14 or 17 units in that building or 15. Okay. The Doc Susie building, uh, second, but the all residential, um, they were using the other portion of the Riverwalk over the district to take advantage of deed restricted 20% of the 10 units. So that would leave two deep and tricky properties going in the dock to see the okay. How common is that to have two buildings on one project, but what I consider double dipping on the exemptions? Well, it's never seen it before. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so if I reread the rules, I don't know if they actually double dip because they gave us both. They have the option of housing or commercial space. So they did commercial space and housing. You got two deed restriction units and you got a commercial unit. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say they were double dipping, they just used the full allowable gamut of what they could build to get the units and the density they need. Shouldn't that be two projects then? Well, even if it was two projects, one could just have. The commercial the and the other, and they get the and then well, I, I know that, but is that legitimate in the planning? Well, there's lots of buildings that are two projects with five or one project with five buildings around the country, right? So it's done right, matter. but they're not using special zoning, not yet, different special zoning for each building, not yet. I think what we need to look at is precedent. So like we don't have a precedent, so we're setting precedent right, right now. Are we okay with this kind of thing moving forward? I think what's done is done. And to me, I don't mind. I, I think no. it's fine. One building um, you know, qualifies in one way and the other one qualifies in another way. Yeah. And I I think that's fine precedent moving forward. Um, so, I like it's it it gives us what we want. We're right. Commercial. We're having density, we're getting commercial, we're yeah. getting deed restriction. So but if you look at the resolution we passed, it looks pretty clear to me that it says requirement of 20% on 20 apartments. But we weren't clear. The resolution wasn't drafted been. well. It should have been yeah. more Well, I know, but that's what we approved. The decision I definitely thought it was. And we so, taught, even though I tried to listen to the, the meeting, I know yeah. that. I remember Parnell saying at that meeting, 20% of 20 is four. So what and that's what I thought that? I was voting for. And uh, but you know, somebody that. says, well, what difference does two units make? Obviously that person who says that hasn't been in contact with people who are struggling to get housing. And I think giving up Two units is a big deal. But we, we're not. The, the rules give them the option of units or. We are giving up two units from what we approved. So we could have them just take part of the commercial and turn it into two units. That would be their option. Of it. They could take part of that commercial and turn it into two residential units. It has to be all commercial. Well, not, if, they're, not if they're getting yeah. two, not if they're putting 20% deed restricted in, and all of a sudden the Hundred then the bottom floor commercial doesn't matter anymore. So that's they have, they have three one bedrooms in there, and I believe two of the one bedrooms are deed restricted. Right. And there's they, still another one there. And there are people looking for two bedrooms and three bedrooms that are affordable also. In my understanding, it's gonna be long term rental. They're not doing night room on it. Yeah. 
that is my that's okay. That's what, okay. That, yeah, that's I'm, that that's that's great, but it's still not deed restricted. Right. Long -term I agree. Housing, long term housing doesn't have to be deed restricted. Yeah, but they can say whatever they want right now. No, right. Fair. So can we? Fair. They're going that's, by the skin of their teeth on everything so far. We, no, they're dip, they're double dipping on everything. Well, let's not set the precedent. But... Well, what yeah. I, but the, I mean, that's then, a whole. Then take, I, mean, I want the two get, units. Take they, away the commercial density requirement. If, if, take that out. If you get a piecemeal and ad hoc, how you make it to make it work for? What would you rather have employed, commercial or residential? I want. They would have done want residential. I want the resolution to be clear when I vote on it. No, right. I, I'm not disagreeing with that. That, that is an issue. Okay. Yeah. And I did go back and listen to the meeting, and the only time there was ever two spoken about was was um, what's his name Bob Bob Ganusi asked are the two deed deed restricted in this building the single family or the single the, the one beggar yeah. he didn't say they knew was there we didn't deed get it restricted in the other one he was asking specifically about that back building mm -hmm. so, and there was no answer. so I think that we definitely this definitely is a mess up or we got played or something. Well, because, I don't think it's because, messed, and I don't think we got played. They used our rules that we put in place to their advantage and to our advantage. So we're not going to, it's not if, like they if, said we're going to give you four units and first floor commercial. Right. That wasn't our intention in the beginning. So we're going to build this. I'm saying, commercial. did you look at this? No, I, I understand what we passed, but that what we passed doesn't fit our. Okay. Well, we so, so the entire time, before. the entire time, I thought it was twenty percent of one. Right, and I was, I was on I think the plan. It's July twenty. That's what I said. Yeah. Right. I think so it's I don't. July but when I went back and read the rules for the Riverwalk District, Marshall took two of the. It's not, but it's not. It's one project. You can't. But it's you can't say, to... well, this this front portion of this yeah. same project is going to get these rules, and then. This imaginary line back here gets these rules. Well, so what's going to stop people from doing that? Being like, us. okay, here's project one, us. and then us, yeah. our, well, they just take the lines. What if, yeah, what if they just wait two years before they build the second building now? Or they just subdivide the lot and you have two buildings. Well, they could. They could just walk in and subdivide the lot. So if you know you have two right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, their open space wouldn't work. Their parking wouldn't work. Yeah, they would. You have shared easements for parking and all that kind of crazy mm -hmm. I wouldn't do it. I don't yeah. have it. Hold on. I, want to re I just think if we, we do, if yeah, we want... I would like to re vote also. And I can call for that. Well, any of us can call for that because right. we passed at seven to zero. Can I throw something out? It could be that the resolution made that assumption as a whole. It could be corrected by basically amending that current resolution of taxes when the current official resolution has not been reported yet in the property. It could be amended. Uh, we could bring that back in two weeks so that the amended resolution would be. I just, I want to bring this up about how do we clarify that? Yeah. Uh, and the reason I did that is, is twofold. Number one, I've got a developer who faced his co owner who faced all this planning, based right. all this cost. Uh, what based on the conversations that he had with, with our town planner mm -hmm. leading up to our meeting, including the, the planning committee, our first planning commission meeting. Uh, right after that, Catherine left, baseline took over, something could have been lost in the transfer. Yeah, I uh, but yeah. I, I'm concerned that if, if we come back and say, no, you need to be for these restricted things. So, how about if we redraft it? to state that if they cannot fill their retail space, then they're obligated to two deed restricted mm -hmm. units. Yeah, I don't think mm -hmm. that, that follows in the bill that they just, they're committing 100% to going forward. You think they didn't I know? know. So they, they commit trust 100%, is like this, but my friend. they can't they fill knew. it. Right. And it ends up being vacant. They knew. Then, a portion of that could be dedicated towards uh, some sort of lodge or housing. That's just a thought. So that covers you're us. You're it's, asking them to change commercial space into residential space. Well, that's a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and hopefully they won't. 
but if they build wow. like you said in winter park none of, the, none of that new commercial space has sold or rented or rented so what were the prices, what were the prices? yeah right okay it's, it's just a thought because I agree, I don't know. I don't think we should go back on what we've been telling them all along. Right. Well, that's because the problem. I think that the, the, what we have been as a board and as a committee were in under the assumption of one thing. Apparently, there was talk between staff and developers that was never con conveyed to the commission and clarified to the commission and the board. Huh. I mean, I have, how many times did we ask? The housing assessment. I, I, we kept saying, I kept saying, no, that's wrong. That's even before I saw this resolution. Mm -hmm. I kept saying that is wrong. There's four. Okay. Well, I mean, all right. So then the flip side of that is they didn't do 100% commercial on the ground floor if you're including the whole, the whole build. of buildings. They're only doing it in 50% of their project. So why is why is that okay and approved? But the other part is like maybe because housing is such a priority. How many how many units from the back building? How many units from the front? Ten, ten, ten. ten. I'm hoping that just there's a triple you know? I mean, I'm of course I'm all for more deed restricted housing, but I don't think we can go back on a developer that we said okay. This they. Is fine. They were here the night we were saying it's supposed to be four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they knew that if they did commercial for one bill, they why didn't they say something? Why didn't they say? They why didn't, didn't our staff because, say something? Because between it changed, and they may have not. We didn't think about it. I didn't think about it. I said it in my head, but I probably didn't. What I said out loud is twenty percent, twenty four. You said that out loud. No, right. Or I heard your head. <laughs> oh god i hope you don't get in there <laughs> um but yeah because that was my thought and then when i read it, it said, or commercial space on the building counts as your two d restricted well that this bill four out. four of you are on the planning commission right yep so it was never explained for the other three of us right but we were asked Right, and so that's when we just, lost Catherine. It was explained to us. What? Way in that point about time we lost Catherine. Well, it was Pretty explained. Close. I remember Catherine talking about it like on the first day when we bought the property, how the river walk worked. And then we didn't hear a whole lot about it until planning commission, final meeting. And then the book. So I'm sure we went through and said, oh, yeah, right. So you're doing two buildings. One's got commercial under it. One's going to give us two units. That meets your 20% requirement. And I, I'm sure if you went through all the meetings, you'd find that. Mm -hmm. Not I did no conversation, huh? Well, I went through all the meetings. And could you find the only time ever that? two was said was when Bob brought up that back building. No, no, I mean, that's talking about the Riverwalk rules and regulations. But, uh, the commercial versus the density. It would be like we could show the clip about three or three minutes long of that planning commission meeting with Kathy. Well, that. Yeah, I just, I, that doesn't matter because yeah, three of us, I mean, it's what we vote on. Right. No matter what's said at Planning Commission. It's true. Mm -hmm. Planning yeah. Commission's an advisory board. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's one of the reasons I had concerns about so many board members being on the Planning Commission. Right. It's too much intermingling of that. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this is someone. Just slip through. I'm I'm really confused about all this happened. But that resolution is pretty clear. If I read that, I would say that's four units. Mm -hmm. that's... Okay. You start well, I guess they need to deed restrict two more units. An honest person would have said, "Hey guys, it's four. It's only two. Like, well, and I don't know what their benefit was to not say something if we were right. passing a resolution with four absolutely restricted units." Why would they just said? Yeah. They, they said it's gonna they, catch you. There are twenty units in total. And couldn't they take a That's a dishonest, shady thing. thing. Well, are they made out of cut it either? They made out of No, they did. For now, come on. But they're planning on renting them all long term. Anyway. They did say all long term rentals. Right. That to them they're all deed restricted anyway, because they're doing long term rentals now. 
us. Yeah, they can say whatever they want right head. now. In their head. I'm just saying, okay, we're writing them all long term. We're giving two studio units as 20%. That's another argument for why we should come up with what a unit is. We're giving two studio units of 20% or the 10% of each building, right? So you get two units out of the 10. You get commercial out of the front. But if we actually did 20% of the square footage, you'd be getting two bigger units instead of just the studio units that were no. deed restricted. No. So asking them to deed restrict two more units in the project, mm -hmm. they'll do the other studio and they'll do the next smallest building. Yeah, that's fine. Which is fine. And their deed restriction is they run them long term. You yeah, can't ask them long -term. Long -term. They can do whatever they want as long as there's four deed restricted the units in that right? development. Let's not forget, these are, we're representing Frazier, people of Frazier, right now. not about us. What? It's in there. But it's 80% hand. I understand, but so is the open, so is the variance of putting commercial space in the next building. It's in there. And they got it's, higher density. And this is what we are By putting commercial space, by putting F. commercial space in the building, shady. you got higher density. What would you like to do? Call them up. Long term rental doesn't mean it's going to be let's say price control. Not, they can charge anything they want, right? Right. So they're not going to be affordable if they're long term rental. They can charge what people will pay. Market well, pay. of course, so what the market will pay, but then that's not affordable workforce housing. No. I, I think since we passed a resolution that says four deed restricted units, if they want that change, they need to come to us and, us and explain that they can't make it work or whatever their okay. situation is. I would agree with that. Yeah, or they were here. Right. Compromise. Right. right, right. I mean, I'm just letting you know that my argument is would be the commercial space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, mean, I see that. The commercial, but then again, it's the resolution that says four units. So yeah, it's, when Phil, right, when I talked about it, I thought about it because it was like I said four units, twenty percent and four, right? And then I went. It doesn't oh, really change their construction plans. Which I the resolution just, doesn't actually just, say four units. No, what's it? Twenty percent of four. Twenty percent of the resolution. But, you know, it calls out 20 apartments and then down below it says 20 percent yeah so right. that's what we passed so if they want it changed we should have probably change. put in in parentheses after 20 percent four units yeah Maybe. but i mean either way it's it's yeah. clear enough but yeah yeah well, the whole thing has been kind of okay unclear because even the planning commission they did not definitively say there will be two deep restricted projects to right. right they simply said we're going, to use, we're going to split the properties, put them as two separate. They did not. They did they? No, they didn't. They would be in different developments. They would have done two development projects. I'm just telling you what Catherine one. said at the plan of each. You would have had to have more parking, more open space, yeah. all that. They okay, to, let's move on. They're like a biker that wants to use so, the lane and then blow so the stop what, sign. What you know? <laughs> they want, they want both. They want both, both things. Things. Every developer wants to build as much yeah. as they can. Hopefully, we'll report back next mm -hmm. meeting. I will have an answer by this meeting. Okay. Okay. Better hurry up the building. They don't change their building plans. They don't, they don't even they have do. to change no, it. Yeah. Okay, we are at um, updates. Am I at the right spot now? Somebody keep in track of me. Okay, updates. Mural Festival update, Sarah. That's me. Michael, can you pull up the presentation? Oh, please don't do that. <laughs> Hi, Sarah. Hello. Hi, I will make this as quick as possible, as always. <laughs> All right, so Mural Festival 2022. Um, just a couple of quick highlights. Um, we upped it from 25 artists to 30. Um, we had a lot of locals, but we also had people from all over the United States. We were actually trying to get an international artist from India, but he couldn't figure out his visa and stuff like that. Apparently, it's, it's pretty hard. Um, uh, the festival actually started on Thursday with an artist reception at Fraser River Beer Company. Um, we had, you know, beers and live music there. Most of the artists checked in that evening. Uh, the attendance seemed to be roughly the same as it was last year. It's kind of hard to tell because everybody's spread out and walking around the whole time. So we don't have like an actual entrance and exit. Um, we did use online voting this year, which increased uh, the voting revenue quite a bit. 
And it also allowed people that weren't able to attend in person to vote for their favorite artist. Uh, the layout was also a little bit more condensed than it was from previous years. Uh, we cr closed down a portion of Railroad Avenue and had a, a large cluster there. Now there's just some pictures, if you want to scroll, of the progress. Can you go to the next one? And one more. And there are first, second, and third place winners. The first place winner was a local girl from Granby, I believe, and the two other ones were um, Colorado, uh, Denver area. And then we also added this year the artist choice. So all the artists voted on, can you go to the next slide? Um, the artists voted on their favorite mural and artist. Um, I think it was Charlie Malpass won the artist choice. She was from California. And then the commission award, which is picked by the property owner that's getting the mural and also the public arts committee um, was, uh, you can actually see it being painted on Vicious Cycle. Right now, he I talked to him today and he said he'd probably be finished up either late tomorrow or early Friday. So that should be complete. Here's a couple, can you go to the next slide? A couple stats from uh, 2021 versus 2022. We, like I said before, we increased uh, from 25 to 30 artists. Revenues grew 40% um, to support Fraser Valley Arts and the festival, but expenses also grew. Um, because of um, the added awards and also music. And then there's some graphs and stuff that you guys can look at on your own with revenues um, versus expenses, 2021 and 2022. Uh, the same thing with the next slide, where the revenue sources came from, 2021 versus 2022. Um, and then the next slide is expense sources, uh, 2021 versus 2022. In our recap, this was just a couple of the the highlights. Next slide. Um, obviously, we talked about a bunch more, but uh, because it was there was a large cluster, um, kind of off of 40 versus the previous year. Um, we didn't really even think about signage on Highway 40 because it was very obvious where the murals were on last year because they're all spread along 40. So better signage for next year. Um, we also talked about the voting. It was, uh, it seemed to be a little bit, you, it wasn't, um, it wasn't limited on how many votes somebody could, could vote for a single person. So that, that kind of swayed the votes in one direction. Um, we spend a lot of, a lot on music and it doesn't really seem to add a lot to it. Um, it's a large cost, so we're going probably not going to do that next year. If anybody remembers, the first year we used KFFR, they did a live broadcast from the event, and that worked out really well. Um, they wanted to add more murals, and then also um, we're working on getting sponsorships for all the events in Fraser. And that's it. Questions, concerns, comments? Well, sorry, did anybody check to see what kind of cell tag bump we got? Can we see that yet, Rob? We can't see that. We had our busiest day ever that Saturday until well, last Sunday. <laughs> so we beat it. Wow. Yeah. It always seems like there's a, a spike in sales tax that we can. Can you break down the sales tax by day or week? There is a way to do it. It's not redacted. Um, it's, it's reported over the month. Right. Daily and stuff like that. Right. So, um, I can I can try to tease out some of it, but I don't know if I'll be able to look at all the numbers. Would you do that, please? Right. <laughs> Whenever that comes. I just thought In your spare time, Ron. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Income and expenses. That's one of them. I think we have to report to the state on the twentieth of the mm -hmm. right? And then. But it's for the whole yeah. month. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't yeah. It doesn't break it down by yeah, day. No, there, there are a couple of reports where I can get more yeah. detailed stuff. It's usually by day. Mm -hmm. Unless they're reporting on a regular basis, a weekly basis. Um, some folks do that. Okay. Yeah. I would say 
the band was really good, or at least the one on Sunday, that folk band from mm-hmm. Utah, Wedding, Wedding Crasher band. Uh, yeah. But, you know, where they were at the end of the street there, where, that's just, that's a terrible location. Mm-hmm. And there weren't that many people, there were people there, but they were a really good band. But, you know, it's like, it's like putting them in a basement somewhere, you know, it's, it's super fun. Well, I think it's good not to spend money on the band if we have another option. It's an art, yeah, it's an art festival versus a music festival. So right. that's kind of, yeah, we tried it a couple of years and it just didn't, it didn't really work out. And yeah. I honestly oh. don't want to micromanage them, mm-hmm. but the voting, mm-hmm. who cares? Yeah. I mean, if it, if it brings in more revenue for the art center. I you know, that was kind of the initial... Really- that really was the matter. initial discussion, you know. Um, when you have those three different categories, I mean, mm-hmm. as long as your the revenue is being generated for the arts, does it really matter? Right. So, well, I, I, I heard people <laughs> say so and so bought so many or votes. Yeah, that's so. True. The rest of us don't even have to bother. So, well, that's another argument. Yeah. Well, there's. Yes. I mean, look at the revenue that was generated this year versus last year. I mean, it's huge. Yeah. There, so I don't know, whatever it was. So, are they that. Mm-hmm. so they're buying a prize basically? No. Basically, like you could spend 500 to win 2,500. No. No. Your, your father, hmm? your husband is purchasing <laughs> so, but it, there's different categories, which is really yeah. nice. And the commission award is honestly the biggest one, you know, that's the $10,000 award and that's picked by the public arts committee and, and this year it was by vicious cycle. So, okay, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the voting. Art is art. In the eye of the bowl. It's an eye of the (laughs) bowl. I I would not have voted. So a lot of people had, could still find it. And I couldn't, find it i didn't but i didn't google fraser valley arts and back to what i was kind of harping on last time around under explore fraser and arts if we could just put a link there mm-hmm. to that fraser valley arts oh, okay profit, mm-hmm. because so right. and well and the and the bidding my sister in new mexico was trying to bid but she gave up because when i was at work couldn't get in she couldn't find it yeah, see, I couldn't yeah, find I couldn't it either. either. And she it. has oh, lots of money. Vote. So if yeah. if under yeah. what's happening in Explore Frazier, if we just had a link there to that, mm-hmm. that I think that would be great. Or if I would have known it was on hand bid, I, I could have gone there easier. I got, Philip had to help me get to my bidding page. It's and... nice to have the youngsters to help you out. Eric, Eric had to help me. So. <laughs> Eric had to help you. <laughs> We and learn, as, we as learn can, every year. We learn something new every year. Yeah. Well, okay, and as you can see, it was good for <laughs> me to get there. Beautiful. I don't know about increasing it to 45. Yeah, I know. That's it's just a little over the top. Those are big pieces. Yeah, they are. And people want to have so much room to sell <laughs> mm-hmm. them. So I, don't know. I, don't, I think that they're, I think that the Public Arts Committee is doing an amazing job. Yes, they And are. we shouldn't be micromanaging them. Okay. That's how I feel because they're, I mean, this is their baby and they're, you're not the ones out there volunteering, creating, finding the artists. It's true. But they, they do an amazing job. Yeah. They are and I, I may be biased. biased, biased <laughs> but, uh, and that's why I want to link on our website so we can show that we support them and it makes it yeah. easy for people to access them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you, that, Sarah. Yes. I'm not done. <laughs> what? So this is the first year we've had an entry fee. Is that right? And how much? Well, I guess I could divide that. Twenty-five dollars. Twenty-five. Oh, I see. So everyone, so yeah. To become an or you know, the paint was charged a twenty-five dollar entry fee for the application, and we hadn't done that in the past. And then the prizes were what? Uh, what was that? Twenty five hundred was the the first place, and then sixty dollars was the second place, and then the third place was the 
the second, thirteen was the third. The commission was ten thousand, and the artist's choice was twenty five hundred. Okay. Okay. And this Friday, the that organization is hosting the plein air. Plein air, right? That was the artist reception, which we're all invited to. So it'd be great to go and show support for the organization. You, I believe we got a meal. We all got an email from Steve Fitzgerald. It was about mm -hmm. a week ago. Are you done? Are we all done? I am done now. Okay. Good job. Notary services. Antoinette. Yeah, that's great. So um, one of my goals was with bringing on a deputy clerk was to offer this service to the town. Um, if you've had to have notarized no, documents notarized, it's very hard to find a notary in town. So this is a service that we're going to offer here at Town Hall. Um, we have three notaries available to provide the service. Uh, we are going to start with limited days and times and see how that goes. And if it's not an issue, potentially we'll expand that over time. But we'll just kind of see how that goes. Um, we're not going to, there's going to be no charge for the services. Is it going to be complimentary? And it can be for anyone. You don't have to be a resident of Fraser to um, get the service. And then um, we will just, you know, there's a maximum of four, four notary acts a day, which is, is probably more than anybody would really need. We will, we won't do any real estate or lending documents. Those are, those are those. Um, they're just too lengthy and too complicated for us to, to do. And then if there's, you know, a document that crosses our desk, if one of the notaries is like, you know, I'm just really not comfortable, we're not going to say, oh, you can ask one of the other notaries. Sorry, we're not going to notarize that document for you. Um, so, yeah, um, we'll have it advertised on our website, and then we'll do a little marketing campaign to get the word out um, to the to the businesses and everybody and let them know that we're going to offer that service. Cool. Yeah. A, co a couple a months service. ago, I was in a bank asking for a notary and said, no. Go to the town of Fraser. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think we play that game back and forth. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Any other updates? I have one. Um, February the 16th, the uh, Middle Park Health came to our board and was at, talking about their project. And they asked the board <clears> to consider <throat> support and possible financial support. Uh, shortly after that, Philip Binda signed a letter of support for the Middle Park Health project. Um, they have not come back to us saying we'd like financial support. That was the only ask that was made, and that was that we consider some kind of support. I do know that last night at Winter Park Town Board approved a fifty thousand dollar support uh, for the Mental Park Health, and I wanted to ask the question if the board is interested in any kind of financial support that they might want to offer. I did talk to Rob. Uh, there is. He's exploring uh, possibly using the American Rescue Act funds for that. Part of the Middle Park Health project includes what they call a meet me center, uh, where the regional broadband will be come in and becomes a dis kind of a distribution center. And that supports, you know, connectivity for residents and businesses within the valley. Um, they're also providing an office that can uh, house a mental health professional as well. Um, but I just wanted to get the board's uh, thoughts on whether or not they wanted to provide some kind of financial support or just let the project go. And they haven't asked for it. They, they haven't given asked. them money for it. I'm going to fight really hard for two de restricted units for their nurses. <laughs> really hard. No, I'm just curious. What are, they, what are they asking money for? They're not asking for money. They asked back in September 16th to consider financial oh, support. Geez. Well, what did Winter Park give me fifty thousand dollars for? That Probably. was what Winter Park Board wanted to do. They have more money. So, but they haven't asked us yet. Understood. Right. But I'm no, we. So. Nobody's yeah. asked us. Yeah. Saying, nobody said. Did Winter Park get a request? I don't think them? they did either. Financial request. Okay. And mm -hmm. be honest with you, that's going to be a build a new yeah. facility in, in Grand Park, or is it? Yeah, it's going to no, be in a, Fraser. Yeah, yeah in Fraser, in Grand Park. Park. Well, no, that is uh, Grand Park. Grand Park. Is that what they're asking money for? I, they're not asking apparently. Well, I don't know why. Not, we're, it, we're, we're, we're trying to volunteer, I guess. No. 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 They, they did when they came, they did say that they were, when we signed that letter of support, they did say we were requesting financial support, but that was the end of it. They didn't ask for a dollar, specific dollar amount or anything. And, and 
Now, even the 50,000 that Winter Park is doing, this is a multi million dollar project. It's a drop in the bucket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, sim it's more symbolic mm -hmm. uh, than anything. But I wanted to ask the board if, if they would want to consider that. If they did, we would go to Rob and see if we could, where the funds would come from. But if you don't, that's fine too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There, there are four profits there. Yeah. So those other have funds. Have you guys been in any of their funding? Oh, they're expensive. Yeah. Okay. I think it's a great thing for our community, but. Um, okay. Any other updates? I think we should just mention the stage one fire restrictions that go into effect at midnight. Yeah. I'm sure we've all gotten emails about them. Mm -hmm. They're in words instead of pictures. I like, <laughs> I like fire restrictions in pictures. Stage, Stage one at midnight tonight. Katie, do you no. know them offhand? Well, uh, Stage one, I think you're still allowed a small fire in a designated space. You know, it's got to be small and contained, but no open burning. Okay, the night. No Stage camp, one. general camp. Stage look look it up, somebody. Right. No, no campfires and campgrounds. You could still do charcoal grills on your own private property. Um, no open burning for some of them. Okay, I would suggest people looking Wait. it up on, online and rather than yeah. taking <clears throat> our guests. Yes, don't take our guests. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. We, right. we can share social media. Each grant fire, share mm -hmm. the correct information. Yeah. Great. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Any other updates? Uh, I have two. One, I had a question from a constituent when is old town fraser celebrating halloween because halloween is on a monday this uh, year so are we actually trick-or-treating on a monday or it's are always, we... monday it's always on. halloween all, always always. always celebrate on the day of yeah. halloween all right and this year um the police department will be opening the church for trick-or-treat with pop which we haven't done in several years okay fun. great cool yeah and then the other one might be a request more for an update from the Fraser River Valley Housing Authority, but when are we gonna get the verbiage of what's going to go on the ballot? And are we going to be, hopefully we're all gonna be promoting that, but when are we gonna be getting it? They approved the verbiage at the last meeting. Um, um, we kind of get into some tricky territories about promoting that, you know, since we're a, basically a tax base entity, uh, there could be, I think we talked about restrictions about whether or not as a board, we can say, go out there and vote yes for this. Or not. I think there's some, some state statutes that prohibit us from doing that, but I will get that verbiage and uh, send that to all the board members. Great. Thank you. Will that will that apply since we're asking for money for a different entity? I believe it does. We asked that question. Huh. Michael, do you have any other information on that? I don't. Okay. I think we just need to look up if that's something that we're allowed to do as a board or if it has to be done individually uh, by like members of the board, for example. So like Brian Sirkman can do it, but Trustee Sir Bennett cannot. No, no, not you're that. you're that's prohibited that. from campaigning for that ballot measure. The board as a whole approving promotion of something versus the trustee promoting something. Oh, I'm not sure about that either, Michael. I'll get clarity on that. So send that clarity language along with that ballot language. Great. Thank you. Okay. Any other updates? Jack Kerak was unveiled. Yeah, That's bad. that was pretty exciting. There was 50 or so people that showed up for it. Katie was there. Um, Eileen came early. I, Eileen came <laughs> early and missed the whole thing. Um, it was great. It was a great turnout. There was it was a, a great turnout. One of um, the uh, <laughs> well, Anne's, where was Nancy? So where is she from? The Jack yeah. Kerak Foundation. Yeah. Yeah. So they 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 actually had one of President. Jack Kerak's president of that showed up and gave a little speech. Mm -hmm. Rich Shimano gave a really nice speech about um, Jack Kerak. It was a good it was a good turnout. So it was yeah. it's nice. So if you guys haven't been over there, you should go over there and check it out. 
Joe from Public Works did Joe, a good yeah, job. Joe, reading. Joe did a reading from On the Road. Yeah, that was good. Is that a life size statue or like? I it is seventy five percent. It it's pretty good size. No, yeah, but, but it's, it's not, not life not size. It's not. It's not. It's it's not. Been close. Yeah, he might have been. What's that? It's close. Yeah. If he's if he's four foot. To in real is life, that how, yeah, is that how mm -hmm. it is? It's it's elevated. elevated in the it is. It is okay. not. <laughs> like that. Okay. He, he looks like a child up there. It just looks huge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but it's it's really cool, and uh, the mural park is amazing. Kate, Katie and actually walked down to our lot down by the river and made the executive decision that we should move the art center down there. Leave so, the mural park. So I have to take everybody for a walk. Down. Well, I, no I've been thinking yeah. that too. Yeah. I've never yeah. It's never been officially. What? In the mural park? Well, because you ain't going to see it from the highway now. It's yeah. never been. No. Okay. Well, oh, yeah, that's a sweet spot. Okay. okay. I don't cross 40 that often. So <laughs> who, who, who wants to read? Brian yeah. Oster. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> I move to enter into three executive sessions. The first executive session is for a conference with the town attorney for the purpose of receiving legal advice on a specific legal question under CRS section 2464024B and for the purpose of determining positions relative to matters that may be subject to negotiations, developing strategy for negotiations and or instructing negotiators under CRS section 2464024E regarding town litigation, regarding litigation, including town manager, Ed Cannon, Town Attorney Kent Whitmer, and Special Counsel John Jamel. The second executive session is for the purpose of determining positions relative to matters that may be subject to negotiations, developing strategy for negotiations, and or instructing, instructing negotiators under CRS section 246402-4E regarding water rights, including Town Manager Ed Cannon. The third executive session is for discussion of a personnel matter under CRS section 246402-4FL and not involving any specific employees who have requested discussion of the matter in open session regarding town manager review, including town manager Ed Cannon and finance manager Rob Clemens. Okay, is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And then um, we will be coming back because we have something else that we got to take care of and then we won't be recording but kent do you want to do your the spiel about not recording for the first because you'll be in that one sorry about that i was having trouble unmuting no worries. um good evening everybody so it's my opinion that the first executive session uh, the matters discussed therein will be uh, attorney-client privileged, and so uh, no recording will be necessary in that session. Thank you. And we'll take a little five-minute break here and let everybody clear out and get going. Yeah. did talk about considering this coverage show up later in the meeting. Yeah. So have the opportunity to speak. I said we would be back. Is, it, is this somebody here? What? No. After the executive session. I don't, I don't think. I don't know. What is your question? Oh, oh we just talked about if somebody did contact us about wanting to be the business side of the agenda. Open forum. How? But there's nobody out there, is there? Well, you have one person online. Yeah, who is that? You want to ask? John? Well, we're in executive session. Okay. I'll we'll just have to. We'll have to. Why did, why did this last item let me move that before?